Our scripture reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. Perhaps a little bit of a different Pentecost reading, though it is in the lectionary. So listen to and for God's word this morning. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. For the Spirit that God has given does not enslave you and trap you in fear. Instead, through the Spirit, God has adopted you as children. And by that Spirit, we cry out, Abba. God's Spirit joins with our spirit to declare that we are God's children. And if we are children, we are heirs as well. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Sharing in Christ's suffering and sharing in Christ's glory. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. On the day of Pentecost, sounds from heaven, cosmic language, the rush of a mighty wind, invaded the house in which the apostles were gathered and appeared to them as a burning fire. Tongues of fire touched their nerve centers, a power, a wind, a strong breath, if you will. The unseen power of God moved among them and gripped them on this mysterious day. The Holy Spirit is, as Sarah already said, like the wind, which is why both the Old and New Testament speak of wind, spirit, and breath with the same actual word, ruach, in the Hebrew, and pneuma in the Greek. The Spirit is the unseenness of God. I was listening to Sarah and I thought, oh, there it is. I don't need to say anything more this morning. The Spirit is the unseenness of God, working among us, and in particular this morning I want to reflect on working within us. This is what Paul speaks of from our reading in Romans today. God's spirit joins with our spirit to declare we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit given to and dwelling within all people breaks us out of our preoccupation with ourselves and frees us to serve our neighbors, loosen our grasp on our possessions and sets us to loving people in the world. Or as Romans says, as we just read, that spirit that God has given you does not enslave you, does not confine you, does not trap you in fear. Many people often ask, how do I know what I'm supposed to do in life? How do I know the will of God in my life? Well, one thing we can know for sure is that if fear is the motivation, it is not the spirit of God. One of the many gifts of the day of Pentecost that ripples out into the church is that the universal presence of the Spirit makes her home, her dwelling place in each and every one of us. You, my friends, individually and yes, collectively together, are the beloved dwelling place of God. The unseenness of God abides and is seen and made visible in you individually and personally and even more so collectively in us. This is why Paul rhetorically asks the question to the Corinthian church, do you not know that you are God's temple? That God's spirit dwells in you? Individually and collectively, we are the very dwelling place of God. We are the holy of holies. We are where the beauty and glory and majesty of God reside. God's residing and abiding presence lives and moves and has its being in each and every one of you and the collective us. God does not live in temples made by human hands. This is a beautiful and glorious place, is it not? And God does not live in this cathedral of hope. God lives and abides in your body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in the inner room, as Jesus said, where God's 
spirit joins with our spirit and we declare to ourselves and we declare out loud, we are the children of God. The inner work of the Pentecost spirit declares in a sense that you, each of you, and we together are God's home. We are at home with God and God is at home with us. We dwell in the perfect community of God. We are safe and held and seen and honored and beloved and understood and accepted. No matter what our earthly home experience has been, God dwells in us and makes a new home in us. And in that inner space, we, say Paul, cry out, Abba, Daddy, Amma, Mommy. This term that Jesus so scandalously used to speak of God. Now let me be clear, the term Abba that Jesus used to speak of God and that Paul uses here is not a term to gender God as male. Rather, it is a term that flows out of a connection of deep love and intimacy and safety and trust and tenderness with God. Jesus speaks of God in this manner out of the overflow of his own sense of connectedness and oneness and community with God. He was fully at home with God as Abba. And God was fully at home and said, you are my beloved child. In fact, some theologians say that the Spirit is the bond of love and tenderness between Abba God and Jesus the Christ. I find that to be terribly beautiful. The Holy Spirit is the bond of love between Abba God and Jesus the, the Christ. And that Spirit, my friends, is given to each and every one of you and abides in you. The bond of love is poured out and given to you and to all people and draws us into that same loving communion between Abba God and Jesus the Christ. This is our inheritance. This is the gift of Pentecost. When spirit comes to us and joins with our spirit and we declare Abba, Amma, we feel our sense of self being relaxed, and comfortable in home. This is our truest and deepest sense of personal identity. Brennan Manning says it this way, our dignity as Abba's child is our most coherent sense of self. It is the core truth of our existence. Define yourself radically as one beloved by God. This is the true self. Every other identity is an illusion. Travis, Cody, Annie, Sam, as you are confirmed in your faith today, Members and friends of ELPC know that your truest identity and dignity is the beloved child of God. Define yourself radically every day you go to school, every day you walk out into the world as the beloved child of God. And for each of us gathered here today on this Pentecost celebration, be reminded that your truest identity and dignity is as a beloved child of God. On this weekend of pride celebration, define yourself as one who is truly beloved by God. Can I get an amen this morning? Okay. And do not succumb to the temptations that we all face to get back into enslavement or trapped by fear, as Paul said, defining yourself by what you do, what others think of you, or what you think you can control in this world, because those will fail. They will fade. The eternal temptation of all human beings, I believe even including Jesus, is to define ourselves and root our identity outside of ourselves based on our actions and other people, our status and our abilities, etc., etc. And spirit is given to us to free us from that fear, to help us to be at home within ourselves with God, to be one with ourselves as Jesus and Abba are one. Some years ago, I was praying in the morning. 
and I was using a Celtic prayer book as my morning prayer time. And the opening refrain to the morning prayer every morning was the same from Psalm 7 that David just read for us. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. And I hit that point in my prayer and I spirit joining with my spirit and saying stop be still and God asked me where is my temple who is my temple and I felt tears coming into my eyes because I sensed spirit saying to me you BJ are beautiful you are where my glory abides you are where my majesty is don't look out there for glory and majesty and beauty. Look within where I dwell. I am within you. Stop returning to fear and enslavement of looking outside to others and what you do and your successes and your achievements. Look inside where the Spirit is and know that you are beautiful, beloved, and glorious. I know that sounds a little strange and maybe even a little prideful, but friends, Pentecost reminds us that we are beautiful, beloved, and glorious, and the dwelling place of God. Spirit created our human spirits, and we were made to be at home within ourselves with God as partakers of God's divine nature. Our human spirit can indeed directly experience and encounter the uncreated spirit who hovered over the waters of creation. Spirit graces us with the capacity to know and respond in this relationship with spirit. Do you know what I speak of? Do you have moments in your own life where you're gazing at a child, walking in the beauty of creation, reading a beautiful poem, in the midst of an amazing song in worship, perhaps just sitting silently on your porch, and you become aware that this God, this unseen God, is closer to you than you are to your own self, is closer to you than your very breath. And let, lest we think that this is some self imposed self-centered navel gazing. The purpose of this is that we encounter that love within ourselves, this inner work of the Spirit, this naming and noticing our belovedness, this trusting and delighting in the beauty and the glory of God within our very selves, this declaration of children is that we are not only children, we are heirs with God co-heirs with Christ. We are an ancestor of Jesus with Christ, sharing in Christ's suffering and sharing in Christ's glory in the world. We are beneficiaries of God and co-inheritors with Christ, receiving the identity and charge to be God's body in the world. As the beloved children of God, the beautiful and glorious dwelling place of God, filled with the Spirit, who is the bond of love between God and Jesus, we become the beloved community of God in the world, no longer trapped by fear, but freed up in love. We live into our inheritance, sharing and actualizing Christ's suffering and glory in the world through the Holy Spirit at work within us. We are the body of Christ in the world. We are the temple of Holy Spirit in the world, filled and empowered to speak and witness and enact the glorious communion of God within us. Now one of the key words in that Pentecost story is go and be my witnesses. So here's my point. A witness has a direct experience. That person has tasted, seen, heard, encountered something, and they speak and act and live about what they know. So friends, my call to us this morning 
is to practice constantly and continually returning to this inner sanctuary, this dwelling place of God that Jesus described as our inner room to be with God, to notice and pay attention to where is spirit connecting with my spirit? Where is spirit connecting with our truest and deepest sense of self? That true dwelling, that true being, that place where we become centered, grounded, and rooted in the bond of love that is the spirit at work within us. Where we become comfortable, if you will, in our own home. Familiar with the furniture. Familiar with how it feels to live within ourselves with God. And then, in a moment, quietly, God might invite us to do something, to say something, to enact justice, to love mercy, to be kind to a neighbor, to attend to our brokenness. Who knows what it might be? But we must continue to return to ourselves, the beloved dwelling place of God. Let me close with a quote from Clark Pinnock, one of my favorite theologians on the Holy Spirit. And he says this. Here is the answer to our scattered confusion, to the muchness and manyness that afflicts us all. We must not forget that there is a sanctuary within us to which we ought always retire. Eternity is within our hearts, pressing upon our time-torn lives, warming us with intimations of an astounding destiny, calling us home unto ourselves. Friends, on this Pentecost Sunday, may you feel and know your spirit is joined with God's spirit. May you experience even an inkling of those words spontaneously coming out of you this morning. Abba, Amma. And may you know in the depths of your being that you are indeed a beloved child of God. And in fact, the holy, beautiful dwelling place of God. And that you are empowered by that love to give and serve others in this world. May it be so. Amen.